Okay, hi everyone. Um, as Rowan mentioned, I'm Shrani, I'm from the National Maritime Museum. I'm here to talk to you about um, museums and cultural diplomacy. Um, that, uh, so, to start, concept of museums and um, cultural institutions as players in the world of um, international relation, relations is not a new one. Um, it's been taking place for centuries. I'm sure some of you have uh, variations of it, whether it's royalty visiting your institution, that's the King and Queen of Norway who visited the museum a couple of years ago. Um, it might be uh, inviting delegations from overseas. You might be taking your exhibitions um, overseas and fostering that exchange of, of culture. Um, what I want to talk about today is um, museums being more active in international relations, what has sometimes been termed as um, using soft power, which is a, a term by Joseph Nye, or um, this is my favourite, curators as Kissingers, in a, a reference to the uh, American diplomat and secretary of state. And I think increasingly now museums are becoming much more engaged um, and, and much more active in that space. Uh, Earlier this year at the Communicating Museum Conference in Paris, we had a, an example from the Musée Élysée in Switzerland who did a, a fantastic series of exhibitions with their uh, foreign affairs um, department to highlight the plight of refugees. Um, the V&A has some um, history in this space as well. They did an exhibition in Tripoli um, in Libya uh, with street, art street artists, um, British street artists and Libyan street artists um, in a, in a sign of support uh, following the death of Gaddafi. Um, but here at the Australian National Maritime Museum, uh, cultural diplomacy is one of the, the roles we see as the museum's playing, the museum playing. If you're not familiar with the Australian National Maritime Museum, um, we're at the National Centre for the Promotion and Conservation of Australia's Maritime Heritage. Um, it, we take a very broad definition of maritime, takes everything from indigenous um, bark paintings, ind indigenous artwork, um, Torres Strait Islander culture, 18th century exploration, history of the Royal Australian Navy, competitive swimming, surfing, um, sailing, very broad. We also look at very um, significant international uh, maritime stories like Pompeii, an exhibition we had earlier this year, Vikings, US photographer Ansel Adams, um, and I think what probably set us up in this space of being active uh, in international relations, when we opened, we were gifted by the people of the US, so thank you for those of you here, under President Reagan, um, our USA gallery. We were, as a bicentennial gift to um, Australia, you gave us an endowment to set up a gallery which explored US-Australian relations. It's a gallery that still exists today, it's a key part of the museum, and a lot of our international engagement comes out of that space. Uh, in fact, here in the middle of the screen, um, you can see a screenshot of this film that we did to look at a key anniversary in uh, Australian and US uh, maritime history, the Battle of the Coral Sea, the World War II battle. Um, we developed a small film uh, for show in our permanent exhibition action stations, and it was played earlier this year at a special commemorative dinner in New York, uh, attended by our Prime Minister and um, the US President. So that was... Um, we were the only museum represented at that event and um, it was a pretty amazing experience to have our brand and, and our product showcased on that um, stage. Um, what I wanted to highlight today is the experience we've had uh, on a particular issue, um, which was the plight of the World War II wreck of HMAS Perth. Um, which was a World War II Australian uh, ship that was lost during the Battle of the Sunda Strait. Um, it was lost alongside the US warship USS Houston. And um, back in 2013, it became apparent that it was um, the target of illegal salvers. It, for many of you, you're probably thinking, why is the museum getting engaged in this subject? Um, and for us, it was important to our stakeholders. And I guess here it's, I understand that World War II naval history is probably not relevant to many of you here. Um, and maybe even engagement with Indonesia isn't relevant. And I don't think really the subject is all, uh, is really what I want you to take away. But it was the fact that we've got onto an issue that was extremely relevant to our stakeholders, to our veterans, to uh, the Royal Australian Navy, who's a stakeholder in the museum, um, to our visitors. The fact that this shipwreck, which was the grave for over 300 of its crew, um, it was 
just shocking news to hear these reports. Unofficial reports, but reports emerging. Uh, so um, we decided to get involved um, and uh, during that time, um, so this is back in 2013, we looked at ways to leverage our collection, our staff um, and our expertise to see what we could do on this issue and see if we could find out a bit more of what was happening and to advocate for, for protection. Um, so my next tip other than relevancy and getting involved on subjects that are relevant to your stakeholders, it's about planning long term. Um, so this is a long game. We knew that we couldn't just rock on in and say, hey, Indonesia, you really need to protect our warship. What are you doing? And that they would do it immediately and it would all be great. Um, so it has taken us uh, nearly four years um, to get to where we are now. Uh, we started with an MOU with ARCNAS, which are our colleagues. They're the National Centre for um, Archaeology. Uh, we developed an ex uh, a program of exhibitions here in Australia, uh, well, here, I should say there, in Australia and in Indonesia to explore joint maritime history. And this MOU was very much exploring not just the issue of HMAS Perth and its um, state, but also other uh, areas of joint um, history between our two countries. We invited our colleagues from Arkanas over to the museum um, to exchange expertise, look at capacity building at our institution, but also theirs. And a lot of this engagement was outlined in an MOU. And I, I think that's one of the um, things that I would suggest if you're looking to get involved in this space is having a document which outlines uh, how you will engage um, and the terms of your engagement to show that you are um, genuine about your engage engagement and long term is, um, is important. Um, Tip number three was about building trust. And again, this is long term. Uh, it was really important that everybody involved in this project, which included Navy, Department of Veterans Affairs, Department of Environment, our ministry, um, and uh, stakeholders in Indonesia, we needed to build trust and know that we were there um, all to achieve the same goal. Um, so everything, every piece of communication with the public, every piece of communication with media, every step of the process was all discussed, negotiated and agreed. And I, I can't emphasise enough how important that was to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, the, there's some dates here showing that we had the MOU finally signed in 2015. We did a sonar survey jointly with them in 2016. March 2017, earlier this year, we opened an exhibition in Jakarta on the plight of Perth and USS Houston, uh, as well as in Houston, Texas at the um, library uh, Houston Public Library, and then in May 2017, we did a joint dive. Um, so it took a long time to get to that point, uh, and where did we end up? Uh, this is the pictures from the dive. Um, sadly, only 40% of the uh, ship remains, um, which was very sad news and didn't go down well with our stakeholders. Um, but here we were just in October last month, uh, where we have the two remaining Australian survivors, the two gentlemen in the middle, 98 and 94, um, who were there at an event where we opened the exhibition in Sydney. We had our foreign minister, the Honourable Julie Bishop in the orange dress, the Indonesian ambassador, Indonesian consul general, uh, fleet commander from the Royal Australian Navy and the US consul general. And they were all there for announcement that we had achieved... Um, uh, plotting of the site of uh, HMAS Perth as a protected uh, area, protected conservation site, which was really big news and um, had come about because of this long-term relationship. Um, so my tips on uh, how you can do this, have a meaningful engagement on an international level to achieve an outcome that is extremely important to your stakeholders, is to develop relationships with the diplomatic corps, develop relationships with your ambassadors, with your consul generals, both in country and, um, and, and locally. Um, develop MOUs where you can. They're actually really important tools, even as media announcements or opportunities to engage um, leaders. Look long-term and engage on all levels. Um, engaging for education, exhibition programs, publications, maritime archaeologists, uh, whatever it is, but you need to engage on multiple levels to show that you're genuine. Build trust. Again, this is part of being long-term. 
And then finally, be selective with media. We uh, very deliberately developed relationships with key media who we fed the story to, um, rather than just letting the story break. We were very careful about who we would uh, give our public information to, and to ensure that the messaging was consistent, that this was an Australian and Indonesian joint initiative, um, which worked quite successfully for us. So we weren't chasing the story, um, we were controlling it. Um, so that's, they're my tips. Thank you.